Welcome, JJ, to our weekly vlog that we do here at Greatness Magnified. You are my first official retired spy that I'm interviewing. So, and I'm sure first retired spy many people are listening to. So thank you for uh, being with us today. Um, you, you are a human potential and human capital expert. Why is it so important that we understand the importance of human capital? Well, the lane that I specialize in is, is definitely decoding human capital. In regards to, I earn my living, uh, most of my living, working in the shadows. And that all changed the day that I was volunteered to become the first Canadian uh, contact handler since the Second World War. So contact handler is an, an individual that uh, is uh, deployed or sent into a hostile environment where they have to um, discern people's intention or cultivate sources within that hostile environment, determine, discern their intentions and modify their behaviors if and when required. So that whole aspect of needing to present an idea and for people to buy in, um, I just saw a lot of challenges in regards to, uh, I speak my language based on my model of the world. How do I present that language within their model of the world so that they would accept it, they would receive it. And then they were, where, you know, turn and take on the present uh, the presentation and then basically where the team can of the jersey so my experience in the military has taught me how to connect across cultures mm -hmm. in regards to the specific skill sets that are required and then there's also uh, some common denominators across cultures that uh, we all have the same uh, start point and an example would be that we are the sum of all of our experiences good or bad as in you had a good experience buying a car or a bad experience buying a car. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like models uh, affects you and how you tend to see uh, sales or, or purchasing items. Now, we are also the sum of all of our ancestors. That's our DNA. That's our hard wiring. That's how God wired you. So when you look at your nurture, the way that you were brought up, and your nature, the way that you're wired, when you combine these together, you have defined your model of the world. You tend to see people from your lenses, from your perspective. Mm -hmm. So from where I stand, it's always looking at someone and respecting their model of the world. It is mm -hmm. just different. And by better understanding how they were brought up, understanding their cultural background, you can get a sense of where they tend to fit so that when you present an idea, you're presenting a preposition based on how they are wired and not based on how you are wired. So in today's business world, it's very applicable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This yeah, is how it was introduced to me by Dr. Robert Rohn. <laughs> he said, JJ, let me show you how you can annoy 90% of the general population just by being yourself. And I'm like, 90%? What he was saying, because he knew my temperament style, he knew where I was coming from, that I was a little bit more outgoing and task oriented. That's a culture that tends to be a little bit more direct, demanding, decisive, determined, doer. It tends to be the smallest group of general population. So he's saying that you're leaving 90% of the sales, 90% of the money on the table. Would you like to learn to say the same thing in a different way? So mm -hmm. I, I was interested to learn more about this for sure. Well, and certainly from um, the, a recognition standpoint, I could see how that we probably walk around acknowledging others or, or expecting that people want to be appreciated the way we want to be appreciated, which for some people may be, I need very little external validation. In fact, don't bother me right through to people that that is how they know they're doing a good job and that they need it. It's like fuel. It's like energy for them. So what advice do you have for leaders, for colleagues who may not have any intel about exactly people's type per se, whatever way in which we can categorize people, but that how would people be able to respect the fact that people have different preferences when it comes to being acknowledged and appreciated and valued? Well, right off the bat, you, you can you know, find some, a quality, you know, some quality time and ask that person, if you were to receive, if you were to be recognized, how would you like to be recognized? You could just uh, ask. Because then it, it gives you insights for that specific person. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some tendencies in regards to if you're going to learn more about, let's say, um, more about yourself in regards to your temperament, style, your personality, your character. There's three levels of awareness that you can gain, as in uh, level one, which is the discover phase, is it doesn't cost anything except time, as in it's you going online, 
looking at and finding complementary free uh, assessments that you can take and learn about your strengths and your, your lowest traits. Um, there's a saying that your strengths will carry you, your lowest traits should concern you. So that takes time and there's little money involved in this. Level two, which is the experience side of things, is when you invest in the hundreds of dollars. So it could be a 50, 100, $200, but as long as it's in the $100 where you invest in buying a book, uh, maybe an online assessment, and you're taking an audit. So you're spending the time and yet you're investing a little bit in yourself. Level three, which is really the application phase, is when you invest, and that's going to, in, require probably a uh, thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars of investment where you really anchor yourself to discover um, your temperament style and the many different applications. So there's three levels. One is to is the discover phase, which is not it's just time and that you invest online. Uh, number two, uh, in the hundreds of dollars of investment, you're going to be experiencing now the model at a different uh, level. And then the application one, that's in the thousands of dollars where you're going to invest in yourself uh, to, be all the, to be the leader that you need to be uh, and step into your power, step into your strengths so that you can also make a difference in people's lives. So that is also uh, the investment aspect in regards to depending upon your budget and where you stand yourself. There's yeah, and, a and what that does, JJ, is it allows you to have a better understanding about your where you come from. And then do you find that once people have that understanding, they're better able to match different styles of acknowledgement and supporting people because they're able to see themselves and how that does or doesn't fit that 90% of the world that may not be like us? Absolutely. There's a client work that I was uh, working with uh, last year in Montreal. And she has a whole group of professional women that, uh, that she has to uh, lead, right, in regards to uh, the business model that the, they're in. And she was looking for, how do I recognize different members? So they were educated. They were informed in the, the DISC model of human behavior. So the tendencies of the culture that tends to be a little bit more direct, inspiring, supportive, or cautious, and their preferences. And we, I just carried a conversation with them. If you were to receive a recognition or a reward or, uh, or an incentive, what would jazz do? And what we found that there is a pattern. There is a pattern. There, is, there are some tendencies. As in some people that like to have gifts like, but it has to be of high quality, yet others would like to have one-on-one -on -one time with, mm -hmm. with her and to go to her favorite restaurant and to have her favorite meal and to learn more about her. So one is like they wanted things, but others they wanted time, like quality time. And another great little book that's, that's well, it's not a little book, but a, a good book to have in your library definitely is The Five Love Languages. Mm -hmm. Once you understand your temperament style, it's very easy then to superimpose this in regards to the five love languages because yeah. there are some tendencies. I know what my wife likes. I know what my daughter, my kid likes. I know what my son likes. And they, they're getting to see what I tend to like. And if you're going to give me a gift, I appreciate the gift. But if you really want to jazz me, you know, my temperament style needs options. So mm -hmm. it's not a gift card per se. Uh, but there is, there are some tendencies, but when you combine these, uh, definitely you can actually see a pack. And when you meet somebody for the first time, what you're looking to do is you're, you wanting to decode their human capital, looking at them and discerning, well, from which perspective are they coming from? So there's some, uh, there's what I call the two P's to decoding human capital. This is what I teach to law enforcement. This is what I teach to also entrepreneurs. Uh, who want to connect by design and not by chance. So when you look, look, when you look at somebody for the first time, you know, look at the pace perspective. You know, we have a little engine inside of us. We have a motor. Some preferred an, a, a fast pace. Some preferred a reserve pace. One is not better or worse. It is just different. Mm -hmm. If you have to choose right now, you're not locked into this. You can change your mind over lunch. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're more of an outgoing fast pace or a more reserve or slower pace? Mm -hmm. What would you choose? Well, you know me, I'm outgoing and fast paced for sure. So right, at, right there, that's the pace perspective. See, you cannot not communicate. People communicate to you. So from there, it gives you two sides as in, okay, what's the next P? The next P is the priority perspective. As in, when you get up in the morning, do you think about tasks, things that need to be accomplished and work that needs to be done, et cetera? Or do you think about 
people that you're going to interact with, that you're going to socialize, that you're going to meet today. Now, if you have to choose right now, you're not locked into this. Again, you can change your mind over lunch. Where do you sense, where do you lean? Are you more towards the task, getting things done, or towards interacting and being with people and socializing more? Yeah, for, I'm really big on both. However, if I, if, if I had to sacrifice one, I'd always sacrifice tasks over people. Relationships are, are absolutely center for me. So it's relationship first? Yeah. Okay. Now, you notice how you said, I know task and... and, and because we have these two traits in us to a lesser or greater degree. Mm -hmm. So these two questions, the pace perspective and the priority perspective, you can identify a key quadrant. In this case here, we're identifying the, say, the, the culture that tends to be more inspiring, inspiring, influencing, inducing. And knowing you a little bit, you do have that. And that's your leadership style. You inspire people to success, right? Now, there's also a, a yeah. culture in you also. You tend to be more direct, demanding, decisive, because you like to get things done at the same time. So we have these. Now, if I was to, what could I do to recognize you? Well, I know that she's definitely an outgoing individual. You know what? We can actually have it when there's more people around where you receive some form of recognition. Mm -hmm. The D trait will require a certain type of gift and the I trait a certain type of gift. So it would be a combination of both. But then there are some tendencies. So... Uh, for this client in Montreal, what we've designed is basically a little, it's like a checklist of uh, options in regards to if you recognize someone that's strong in, in this quadrant, here are the top five or the top ten items that might uh, suit them or that might uh, they might enjoy receiving. So we do the same thing from an I perspective, an S perspective, and a C perspective. Mm -hmm. And then when you recognize the blend combination, because you just did, like that was a nice blend combination, the I, D culture, which is inspiring and direct get things done and then it's like okay so now i have a better idea of, of what uh what to look for and then i start asking questions with yeah. people around you to if you were to receive something what would really really jazz mm -hmm. and we actually um on our the cool stuff uh tab on greatness magnified we have a template where people can identify what their preferred methods of recognition are and and even if we're trying to think about if we're going to give somebody a gift is it a cup of tea when they're feeling down or is it actually a gift card or is it, a, is it a, a token of some kind where people can identify that? However, I'm so inspired by this interview. I would love to spend a bit of time with you mapping out some of the things that around that, the two P's perspective that people can use as a bit of a gauge, um, a, just a, you know, sort of a thumbnail about where are my people probably at and then identify some different ways in which they can be recognized. And I know you and I for 2018, we're going to be working on an instrument that people can, can use to be able to identify their temperament and their human code and decode that a little bit and match that with their recognition style. So I think we have so much more to come for folks. This is an amazing place, I think, to take a pause. And then um, once that's back out, I'd love to connect with you again so that people have really key tools about how they can bring that into their workplaces or other aspects of their life, their churches, their schools, their communities, and so forth. This was awesome. Thank you so much, JJ. And, um, and, and I'm so glad you came out of the shadows. <laughs> It's easy. It's easy when someone like you asks. Oh, thank you. See, totally my love language, man. Words of acknowledgement. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> Have a great day, JJ. Thank you. Mm. See you there.